Okay, welcome back to the next part where we're going to look at uh, mirroring the boot hard drive, including the boot sector. Um, we're just going to log in here. And we're just going to drop to super user. And one thing that I'll show you is the uh, boot ADM command. Uh, it's going to be set menu and timeout equals 10, for example. Now, at one point, you're going to potentially come across the graphic um, boot selection screen, and it defaults to 30 seconds. Now, you may want to reduce that to 10 seconds, or even five, um, depending on what you like, and that's the command that will do it for you. Um, and that screen will come in useful later on, when it comes to upgrading the system and handling the snapshots of the boot drive. Uh, that's when that comes in handy. <laughs> so um, yeah, there is a use for it, so don't set the timeout too low, or you could uh, land yourself in trouble if you have an upgrade and the upgrade fails, uh, because you won't be able to easily select the previous uh, snapshot. Right, what we're now going to get used to is the format command. So we're going to type format, and it's going to search for disks, and we've currently only got, uh, in fact, we've got two hard drives in there. <coughs> You'll note that previously I entered the format command, uh, or you may not, and this is our primary hard drive, which is controller 3, um, channel 0, which is the T, D0, um, which is used for SCSI, I think, in... Uh, I've forgotten the term, but it's uh, channels which are effectively sub-channels. Uh, we obviously don't use that with uh, SATA um, controllers. And then there is another element, which is the S element, which we'll come into at the moment. Now, we're going to take a quick look at drive zero. So we're going to go at zero. Uh, the format menu, um, if you happen to get yourself stuck and you don't know what the commands are, you can just enter a question mark and it will give you the menu again. But we're going to <coughs> have a look at the partition of the drive. And I'm going to ask for a print. So you can see what's going on and how the boot drive is partitioned. You'll note that uh, some of these slices, as they're referred to, uh, are reserved. You'll notice that 8 is reserved for boot, and um, it's reserved uh, the first cylinder, which in our case is 7.84 meg. Um, backup is also reserved. Uh, that is uh, slice 2, and that gives access um, to the entire drive surface if something like a backup utility needs it. Um, 9 was uh, reserved in Solaris, Open Solaris, and I think that it is still reserved in Open Indiana, even though it doesn't appear to have any tag. Um, and as you can see, root is uh, slice zero, and it's using the rest of the entirety of the hard drive. So we're going to quit out of here, and I'm going to quit out of format, and I'm going to go back in again. This time I'm going to select uh, drive one, which in our case is channel uh, controller three, channel one, disk zero. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the fdisk command. Um, it's currently got a Solaris system partition. Um, yes, to accept. Uh, oh, no FDisk table exists, so it's asking us uh, if we want to put on a 100% Solaris system partition. We could actually answer why to that, but I'm just going to answer no to show you this. Um, as you can see, uh, there's no partitions on here, so we're going to use option 1 to create a partition. Um, and we're going to... it gives us a choice of different partitions, but we're going to... Um, select one for a Solaris 2 partition. It's going to ask us for the percentage of the disk to use and we're going to ask for a hundred percent. Should it become the active partition? This is where we need to, uh, to answer yes, because should the primary boot drive fail, we're going to need an active partition on this backup drive in order for it to be able to boot properly. So we're going to answer yes and that shows that we have an active Solaris 2 partition now, occupying 100% of the drive. So we're now going to enter option 6 to exit, which is update the disk configuration and exit. 
so that's the partition on there. We now need to slice it. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so we go into partition. Now um, we're going to print the partition so you can see what's here. As you can see, we've got the predetermined positions, which is eight for boot, um, the first cylinder, and two, we have the backup partition, which allows access to the entire surface. So we're going to modify this and it's going to ask us and we're going to want an all free hog. Now what's going to happen here is uh, we are going to specify the partition to use as the all free hog. Then it will ask us how much space we want to assign to the other uh, partitions on here, the other slices and whatever's left will then get assigned to the all free hog partition. So we're going to go one for an all free hog. Um, do we want to continue creating a new partition? Yes. <coughs> the free hog partition, we are going to specify slice zero. It's now going to ask us how much we want to put on slice one. Nothing. Three, nothing. Four, nothing. Five, nothing. Six, nothing. Seven, nothing. And this is the result. <coughs> we again have eight for the boot two reserved for hold surface access and now we have one slice at zero with the rest of the hard drive space. Are we okay to make it the current partition table? Yes. Now we need to give it a table name as you can see it's currently called root so we're not going to change this we're going to call it root. Ready to label disk? Yes. And one thing I will tell you to note is the quotations around the name for the table. So now if we print the partition, you can see that it's taken. So now we're going to quit out of this. We have FDisk and partitioned the drive. Now we actually need to install grub to this drive. So we're going to use the install grub command. This will be um, underneath in the description underneath the video. We're going to use the option minus M. I've got to be careful typing this now because the backspace won't work. So it's slash boot slash grub slash stage one space slash boot slash grub slash stage two and it's to the device and it's going to be to RDSK because we want raw disk access and this is going to be controller three channel one uh, disk zero, slice zero. Um, I'm just going to double check that. Yes, that's correct. Updating the master boot sector destroys existing boot managers, if any. Continue. Yes. That's it. It's written out. Now, with the boot sector there, we need to mirror the actual ZFS partition itself. So if we ask for a Z pool status, you can see that R pool one uh, which is the root pool, just contains the slice um, on the initial hard drive. When we're dealing with ZFS, we normally deal with it at a device level, so we're not usually dealing with slice level. But because this is the root partition, this is what we're going to have to do. So we're going to add the other slice to this device. So we're going to... Um, uh, <coughs> Z pool, attach, we're going to use a minus F. Um, this R pool one um, is going to consist of C three T zero T zero S zero, and we're going to add three C three T one D zero S zero. Now the minus F is going to be needed because otherwise it will say uh, there's actually two. The, the partition you're adding S zero collides with S two which we know because S2 is a partition which allows entire surface access. So minus F gets around that and that will now do it. So once it's done that, <coughs> we're just going to uh, wait a moment. Right, so Z pool status, you can see that it's resilvering. Um, it's added um, C3T1 to the set and it's resilvering and it's going to take about four minutes. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to have a slip of coffee because my throat's going again. Ah. <clears throat> OK. 
come on computer. <sighs> this does take its time, doesn't it? Uh, yep, 43% done, so we're nearly there. Not too far off, it's not going to take the four minutes that it initially said. <laughs> Uh, oh. oh, come on, machine. <laughs> uh, how far are we now? 68% done. Not far. So we're going to wait until this says all is done and the resilvering is finished, and then we're literally going to shut the machine down. We're going to remove C3T0 from the machine and boot it and see what happens. And if it fails, I'm going to look like a right arse. <coughs> Nearly there. I should be more patient, shouldn't I? <sighs> ah. It's still hammering away there. Um. Yep, hard drive is going bananas. <laughs> Yeah, da 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 da. <clears throat> uh, if you wanted proof that um, that I'm not actually originally booting from C3T1, uh, the proof was in the previous version, previous Z pool status, where it showed that the only member of uh, R pool one was C3T0. Uh, so now we're done. Yes, all resilvered. I'm now going to ask for an init zero, which is going to take the box down. Uh, going down on signal 15. <coughs> System is down, so we're just going to shut the box off physically. And uh, once it's off, then I'm going to just eject that hard drive, bring the box back up again, and hopefully this should all boot. Otherwise I'm going to look very foolish. Nothing new there then. <sighs> mm. Here she comes. <coughs> Eight gig of memory. <sighs> oh, come on. Ah, here you are. This is the um, the GUI uh, front end, and you can see that I've reduced the boot time. And if we had um, other snapshots in here, that is how we would select them, and that's how we would recover from an update that had failed. We just select the previous snapshot and boot from that. So you don't want to reduce that time too much. Open Indiana is now there, <coughs> so it's obviously picked up the drive. It's booting. And here we come, host name Open Indiana. <sighs> so once it's come up, we're going to log in and we're going to ask for a ZFS status, or a Z pool status rather, and then you'll be able to see. Uh, test. Ah, there we go. Um, you can immediately see that it knows it's got a problem. Um, it said description of ZFS drive failed. Um, refer to the necessary author, no automated response, um, red zen pool status minus x and replace the bad device. So I'm just going to su in and uh, ask for a z pool status. And you can see now that the drive that we started with is saying cannot open, unavailable, and the new drive that we just inserted is online. So um, there we go, uh, we've managed to boot from the backup hard drive. I'm now going to uh, initiate an init zero, because this isn't the end of it, by the way. Um, you can do this to test at any time, pretty much. You just gotta be prepared to allow yourself a bit of time to do it. <clears throat> so you can test your um, installation without having to totally smash things up. I've just reinstalled the hard drive. <coughs> Bring the box back up. And uh, hopefully we should be good to go in a moment. Ah, oh boy. 
Uh, but yeah, it's you really need uh, beyond this point to get to grips with your ZFS uh, commands and handling um, ZFS pools. Uh, yawn, come on, 987. I'm just going to press return. Uh, it's going to come up and it's probably going to resilver. Oh, another slip of coffee there. <coughs> Here she comes. I was going to sing a little ditty, do our diddy diddy, and you know the song, but uh, who knows, I might come into violation of copyright from somebody somewhere. Uh, here we go. Test. Test this. Um, can I do it from here? Uh, yes, I can. I don't need to go into root. But you can see that uh, resilvered was compl the resilver was completed uh, very quickly. Um, in zero minutes, resolve the rest with zero errors, and the drives are now online, and everything is happy and running. So, we now have our operating system installed. Um, if we go for IP ADM show ADDR, you can see that we have our network interface up, and we should be able to SSH to the box. Now, the only awkward thing about this is that um, as they change the build, um, you never know what services are installed as default and I'm wondering whether they've got the SMB um, Samba uh, SIFS already installed but we'll come to that uh, in the next video when we'll be um, installing some more hard drives and uh, installing some uh, ZFS sets uh, or rather one ZFS set and um, then we'll be uh, opening up the share, configuring it um, so that uh, we've got access to a share on the box. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye.